Hi folks and welcome to my channel again. In this video I'm going to be working on resolving a couple of licensing related warnings that I saw in the latest version of my MetaRust demo layer. You might remember these from the previous video that I did and today we're going to see if we can get rid of those warnings and end up with a nice clean build of our layer. I'm going to start off by seeing if I can reproduce the errors related to licensing that I saw in my previous video. So I'm in the Meta Rust demo directory on my build machine. I'm running in a Podman container again that's ready to build. So what I'm going to do is clean out the recipe that was causing the issue. So it was the recipe that was using unlicensed and license-mit as its license files, which I think was ripgrad. So we're going to use CAS and we're going to use our test image configuration that we've seen previously. We can use the shell command within CAS so that we can invoke bitbait with some custom arguments. What we're going to do is we're going to bit bake rip grab and then we're going to use dash c clean s state. So this is going to clean up the working directory and drop any shared state that we've got cached for this recipe. And that means when we when we try and build it again, it's going to build again from scratch. So that's going to give us a clean slate as far as rip grab is concerned. And then if I just build the test image configuration again. It's now going to need to rebuild rip grep and then rebuild the image that we want. So this gives us a chance for it to print the warnings again, is my hope. And as we see here, one of them is printed already. Um, so yeah, this is the one saying there's no generic license file for unlicensed in any provider. So strangely I only see the one error, that's slightly confusing. What I'm going to do is redo that again. I'm going to clean that out, but I'm also going to clean out the image recipe itself. If I remember the name of it, which I think I'm going to have to look up. So I've got Visual Studio Code here, was rust-demo-image. So we're going to clean that out as well to make sure that all the tasks that make up the job of building the image get rerun as well. So cleaning out the build directory and the shared state for the image itself there has done the job. It's now ended up rerunning everything and we now see both of the warnings that we saw in the previous video. So this is what I'm going to try and fix. I'm going to try and explain clearly what's going on here and show how to fix these sort of errors. So if we flip back to Visual Studio Code and take a look at the recipe for RipGrap, we see that we've listed unlicensed as one of the licenses that applies to our recipe. Now unlicensed isn't actually used by any other software that is in the open embedded core layer or the other layers that we've got included in this build. So the those layers carry generic license text for all the licenses which are used by recipes in those layers. But they don't carry generic license text for every possible license that anybody could use. Obviously not because people seem to keep inventing new licenses every day. So when we see a new license in one of our recipes, Bitbake isn't going to have that generic license text to include and to pull in when it generates the output. So these to show where these files go, so that this makes a little more sense. If we look in build, temp, deploy licenses, let's look at pox. 
which didn't complain. So OX was distributed under GPL version 2. So we get a copy of the generic GPL license text in here. Let's have a look at that one less. So this is the, you know, the, the canonical idea of what the GPL is. We then get the license file from the recipe itself, which in this case is just the same text in a slightly different format. And we get a recipe info file that just stores a couple of the relevant bits of metadata from the recipe. For now, we just know that we've got this error that needs solving because it can't find the generic license text. Now, there's two ways of resolving this. One of them is to say, to mark the recipe with a flag that says there is no generic text for this license. The other is to actually add the generic copy of the license into our layer, modify our layer configuration to point at the directory of additional license text, and then we should see the issue resolved. So we're going to, because there is generic text available for unlicensed, we're going to go down that second route. So what we're going to do is we're going to find copy of the license text. So for unlicensed, I've had a brief look and found that this is the website for unlicensed. And what we've got here is the generic version of the license text. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this text and we're going to put it in a file. So we're going to create a new directory in our MetaRoss demo layer. Create a new directory and we're going to call it licenses. And inside licenses we have a new file and we're going to call it unlicense. Spelled exactly the same as the way we've done this in the license entry in this recipe. So capitalized U, the rest of it in lowercase. And then in this file, we're going to paste the license text and we're going to save this. So this is kind of a generic idea of what the text of unlicense is. So now what we need to do is we need to say that for this layer, we've got a directory full of additional license text. Now, I don't remember the syntax for that off the top of my head. Now what I do know is if we go on git.openembedded.org, we look in meta OE layer. I know this layer has a licenses directory. So what I'm going to do is look at the layer.conf to see how it adds that licenses directory to the path that Bitbake understands. So here we have license path plus equals layer dir being uh, an expression that expands to the layer that this layer.com applies to and then this licenses file, licenses directory here. So we're going to grab this line here and I think because we've named our licenses directory as licenses, we should just be able to paste this exactly as is into our configuration file. So now when Bitbake sees that our RipGrap recipe calls out unlicensed as one of the licenses for this recipe, it's going to see that there's a file with that same name in the licenses directory and it should pick that file up as the generic license text. Now there's one more thing that I'm going to do before I give this a test and that is just check that unlicensed is the best name to be using here. So what we really want to be using is spdx 
license identifiers. So SPDX yeah, stands for Software Package Data Exchange and this is kind of a standard metadata format for describing software packages and one of the things that it standardizes is the license names. So if we look at this list it's got kind of standardized short identifiers for most kind of popular licenses. Now if on license is listed in here, which I guess it probably is, yeah so it is listed in here and we see that the standardized identifier here is on license with a capital U and everything else is lowercase. Now thankfully that does match exactly what we have used in our recipe so we're happy with that. So now what we're going to do is go back to our terminal and we're going to retry this build and see what happens. Now I'm not sure if I just rebuild this. I'm not sure whether that's actually going to be enough to trigger rerunning the various steps of these recipes. The cache is usually, the logic around the cache is usually pretty good as to deciding when it needs to rebuild and when it doesn't. But when you're testing things out like this and when what you're trying to do is confirm that you make a warning go away, you can't always rely on the cache logic. So here what I see is that the do refs for our image recipe is being run again, but I'm not seeing do compile and the other steps being run again. So that's no good. What we're going to do is we're going to again clean out the build directory in the shared state for the rip rep recipe and again for the demo image. And that's going to force all the tasks to rerun again. And this is hopefully going to be a bit, better, a bit of a better task now. So we should see, yeah, do unpack, do un compile, and so on start to run. So you can see that rip rep has built, and we're now on to the stage of building the image itself. And we can see that there was no warning printed while rip rep was being built. So that's good. We've we've got rid of one of the warnings. The question is. Does the other warning now go away in the production of the image itself? And we see that our build is finished and there's no warning messages printed. And we did, as we did clean out the build directories and the shared state cache for both the image and the rep rep recipe itself, we know that it's rerun all the kind of do package tasks and the QA tasks and everything else that's relevant here. There are going to be warning messages, we would have seen them printed. They haven't been printed, so I'm pretty happy that we've removed those warnings. So, yep, that's what we needed to do. We needed to grab a copy of the unlicensed text and add it to our layer. And then the license class within Open Embedded Core is able to pick that up. So let's grab a terminal in here that's not in our container. And let's have a look the status of our layer. So we've modified the layer.com file and we've added this licenses directory. So we want to add both these things in as a commit. So we can git commit add generic license text for unlicense. And let's just take a quick look at that. We have this line adding license path, and we have the license text for unlicensed. And I'm pretty happy with that, so we're going to just check where we are. We're one commit ahead of origin slash done file, so we're going to push that commit up to GitLab. And we are done solving warnings. We are back to a state where I'm happy with my layer. Before we go, I'm going to briefly talk about why we're capturing this generic license text in the first place. Now in this license variable here in our recipe we're using these references 
you know, short forms of the license name, in this case unlicensed and MIT. And what we want to capture is, you know, what do we actually mean by these identifiers by these statements? And the, these names correspond to some actual expectations around what the terms and conditions of the license that applies to this software are going to be. And we want to capture that definition very clearly in our layer. And we want to capture that definition when we output the license metadata along with our build results from our Yocto project build. So what we're doing is we're capturing the definition of you know, what does this identifier on license mean? Well, it means this block of text here that we got from the unlicensed website. And that's going to match up with what we see on the SPDX website. So if we look at the SPDX license list again, and we find down the bottom of here, we'll find unlicensed again, uh, the unlicensed. So we can look at license text here. And this has, you know, slightly more metadata around, but this has a block of text, which again is the same thing, just formatted slightly differently without the line breaks. And what we should see if we look at ripgrep self we look at the unlicensed file within ripgrep and I move myself back out of the way of that. Yep, we see that this is the same text. Now if this text was different then the license wouldn't be unlicensed, it would not match that SPDX license identifier. Now we can't just compare MD5 sums here because the formatting may be different. We're talking about more of a textual comparison that's hard to automate. But yeah, the, the basic idea is we're just capturing that definition of what we mean by those license identifiers. We're capturing the exact text that we mean. So all that's left is to end the video by saying thank you for watching and if you found this video helpful at all please leave a like, leave a comment, send me a message on Twitter, my handle on Twitter is at pbarker underscore dev and that'll let me know that you appreciate this sort of content and you want to see more videos like this. So until next time, see you again.